Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for a squat and deadlift day, so let's get right into it. Uh, again, I included my main warm-up sets other than my first set with the empty bar in here. Uh, but for me at this point, I'm treating the safety bar squat as almost a warm-up for my deadlifts, right? I'm not pushing it crazy hard. Like even today, um, I felt like I could have done more reps. I came in and did my, my normal 421 um, you know, just went for a good quality work set. Uh, I did four reps, but I know I could have done a fifth if I wanted to, uh, pro probably a sixth. Um, and I may start working these up soon if the, the deadlifts start to stall. Um, but I do want to work on trying to make sure I get a little deeper on a lot of these reps. Part of it's the camera angle, uh, because again, I am going pretty deep here, but maybe not the best camera angle to judge that i may on some of these later start work on getting that camera turned to the side to double check that right it wouldn't be a bad idea but in the meantime um, again it's easy on my shoulders it's letting me do my bench specialization because i don't have my hands way up there cranked up uh, on a bar and again for me i find that no matter what's going on if i can do it on a safety bar i can always do it on a power bar even with the with the worst shoulder setup possible so for me it's always just a good way to train uh, i get great carryover the deadlift today though um, because again i'm really trying to push my deadlift and my bench um, my hands started giving out now it didn't feel entirely like a grip issue but i went to go to do the sixth rep and guess what happened Felt like my hand was starting to tear, so I, I, I pretty much turned loose of it, right? I just, I'm like, I'm done. And I don't know till I'm seeing the footage. I haven't watched the footage yet. I just loaded it into the thing. I don't know if I turned loose or I actually set it down. But I think, no, I did set it down. Good. It felt like my hand was starting to tear. So here's the point we get to. All right, people will always chime in and say, well, you shouldn't let your grip be a limiting factor. You need to train this on your deadlift. But no, I don't. I have an elite deadlift. My maxes are elite. My rep work indicates that I am way deep into elite. Okay. Keeping in mind what I'm doing for five and six rep sets is almost elite if I was doing it for a single. So there's your context for my age and weight class. Um, I can still easily hit elite deadlifts in an open age class. I don't care. In, in other words, I use the rep work both for a training response, but also for what? To get a judge of where I'm weakest at, okay? And if I feel like grip, and, and let's be fair, grip is the issue. Why else would my hands be tearing other than my grip is slipping? So again, we can talk about hand conditioning, but I do all this pulling on that, that deadlift bar. I do my rows on that deadlift bar, okay? I do my rows on the deadlift bar. It's the issue of my posterior chain is stronger than my grip. My posterior chain is stronger than my grip. And I mean, look right here, I just did that and I just hit a PR. I only did my one set of this. This was a PR. I got 10 reps today with that. Normally I get eight, I've got nine once before. I just did 10 reps, all right? I just hit a PR on a posterior chain exercise. Without hitting a deadlift PR in a week or two, my posterior chain is getting stronger. So what does this mean? It means we have to keep working grip. Okay, um, I did two sets of 10 on the belt squats because again, we need just enough work to keep everything going. But this will help my squatting and it'll help bring my squatting up over time. My volumes are pretty low, but we've got great tension, great workloads on everything. Uh, it's sufficient to get some growth. But I've got to maximize a lot of upper body stuff for both the benching and the deadlift because we come over to it. What's limiting my deadlift? It's still gripped to a large extent. Okay? It's still gripped to a very large extent. And if that's the case, I have to keep hammering that. And I, that's where I need a lot of my recovery to go to the upper body. Okay? And I've said that before. I want, I want to get to a 700-pound deadlift. However... The only way that's going to happen is if I keep working grip, keep working grip, and most of that's gonna come from the upper body days. And, and it's going to have to continue to be a priority. And just strapping up to do more reps on a deadlift isn't gonna fix the problem, because one, I'm not getting the grip training, I'm, not, I'm getting less hand conditioning, which I need. I need my hands to be tougher. I need my grip to be stronger. 
the Band-Aid fix is not going to work. And again, I, I know people disagree with that philosophy. A lot of people do, but yet here I am saying, look, I, I like to do it this way. I believe it's the correct way to do it. And I have an elite deadlift as a master's athlete. But to get to that next tier, I don't think that's the solution. Because if we're not hitting these sets like this to where we see the grip failing, we don't know to prioritize it. If I start strapping up and start hitting all these big things and I start calculating all my rep work, oh man, my, my deadlift should be 720 or something, you know, based on a, a rep calculator, because I've strapped up. See where I'm going with this? But then raw, my grip slips at 650 in a meet and I miss it because I didn't know that that was fully what's limiting me and I didn't prioritize it because I'm busy chasing the performance with straps. Where does that leave me? That leaves me sucking. That leaves me failing. Okay, so by forcing myself to do it this way, it reinforces where my priorities are. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna grow the muscles anyways, the primary movers off all this supplemental work. I'm hitting PRs on the glute ham raises, all right? The glute ham raise has direct carryover to my deadlift. I'm getting stronger on rows, that has direct carryover. But I need those rows to improve the grip. And I'm even looking at it going, do I need to be doing power curls or do I need to be going over to hammer curls? What do I need to do? Maybe I need to do both. Maybe I need to alternate them. Maybe I can't afford to skip those on upper body days either because I need the forearm and grip development. It has to keep coming up because I can't get to a point to where a rep calculator starts telling me I can pull 700 or 710 or 720 and then have 650 completely slip out of my hands and rip my hand in the process. Okay, that can't happen. It can't happen. I, I would be in denial at that point if we can't afford that. I don't have that luxury at this point in the game. Okay. Also, we come to the point of, of if my grip's not strong enough, then I'm just beating myself up with crazy limit sets that allow me to load everything harder. Then I've got to recover from it too. Instead of letting my weak link determine the limit and then saying, hey, I've got to keep fixing that weak link. Again, it's about making sure that we do things correctly, right? My posterior chain is not going to grow slower from doing this because I'm still doing all this other work where a lot of the growth comes from. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.